and welcome to my channel Crafting with Shutter Monkey. I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and today I have something a wee bit different for you. I have another whip parade to share with you. This time it's going to be all my knitting whips, so I'm going to have a wee quick run around my room, find all the knitting whips. I am fairly confident that I have a lot more crochet whips, so that's why I did that video first. I'll go get everything looked out and we'll go through them together. When I publish this video, I'll add chapters to it so you can skip through the bits that you don't like. So if you're not interested in seeing cardigans or jumpers or you really don't like socks or toys, you can skip through onto the next section. And anything that I've talked about, I'll also try and link below as well. Right, I'm going to start off today with the jumper and cardigan whips that I have. And as you can see, most of these are looking pretty much completed. So I think we'll start with this. I'll start with this one here. I'll show you this one first. Move the rest out of the way. Get, make a wee bit of space here. So this one was finished, as you can see. It's been folded up in a box for the past five years because there was a few things that I wasn't happy with. The major thing being those buttons. I really, really don't like those buttons. I made the mistake of buying them while I was in John Lewis and thinking they would go quite nice with the cardigan because the cardigan had little flowers on and it didn't, they didn't go at all. But I submitted this for my knitting test with the SWI so I had to get it finished. I didn't have time to get more buttons. So I put these ones on and I never liked them. And it's one of the things that the judge said to me. She says, I don't like your buttons. And I said, neither do I. I don't like them either. I rushed the blocking as well. It didn't get a proper block. It didn't get soaked. It only gets steamed. And I think the way when I steamed it, it overblocked some bits. It blocked some bits flat, but then it crinkled up other bits. It needs blocked properly. So I need new buttons for it. And the other thing that I wasn't happy with, this is the one and only item that I have ever steaked. And I don't think I'll ever steak again. It was the scariest thing I ever did. You knit this cardigan in the round and then you steak up. You steak up the middle. You cut up the middle. Once you steak it, it's not supposed to come apart. And I did use the proper yarn. It was the yarn recommended in the pattern. And it just started to fall apart. So I had to run up and down it with a sewing machine. I had to run up and down this edge here. Just secure it under the sewing machine to make sure it didn't untangle. But then you pick up stitches from the front and the back. And it's almost like a double width. Sorry, I'm not in the shot, am I? It's a double width. It's double. So you've got the, you've actually got, where you've steeped, you've got the edge in here. You've picked up stitches and knitted out, picked up stitches, knitted out. And then there's a, an I-cord cast off along both edges. So you've actually got quite a bit of bulk in here. And then when you add that onto, you do the same at the other side as well. It's quite bulky. And I did wonder about ripping it out. And rather than doing the double bulk, see at the back, just attach a piece of ribbon. Rather than putting the double bulk on. So I would rip out the I-cord edge and take out this here at the back and just cover all that stitching and where the sewing machine's been with a little bit of ribbon. And then I did buy a couple of new buttons, which I thought would be a lot nicer. I thought those ones were much nicer, especially when you go up here. That's going to be much nicer on there, isn't it? But I could only get three of those buttons. I bought these buttons five years ago, by the way, after I used this. 2018. Tells you on there. 2018. Hand knit and item number two. So the plan was that... If I redo the button bands just at the front, so it's only the front piece that I would do, leave the back bit off, redo all the cast off, all the way, all the cast, the I cord cast off. I'm not sure how far round that goes, whether it's the whole jumper, I need to go round the whole because it's all continuous. There, there it starts there. And then replace the buttons. Now I've only got three buttons, but I did wonder, rather than having it that it all fastens up. I could just have it that you've got three buttons at the top. I could adjust where the buttonholes are. 
and I could just have one, two, three. I could even have that bottom buttonhole level with here rather than being up there. So I could have my bottom button buttonhole here and I can have one up there and one at the top. And that would give me a chance to get this all properly blocked because it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern and it would take away a bit of the bulk. It's just, see when you start to get a wee bit plump round the middle, you really don't need this extra bulk here padding out and sticking out at the, at the middle of your, your cardigan. But apart from that, I love it. And it is by Kate Davies. Um, and it's the, just be careful that I'm not showing you part of the pattern. It is the Blaheen, the Blaheen cardigan by Kate Davies. And as you can see, there's not much of this to do and it would be finished. And I did use the recommended yarn which was the Studio Donegal and I've got plenty in here for sorting it I've still got this part here and I've got all of these in here so I've got this full ball that I can do my repairs with do the changes that I need to make and then I still have all of that as well so I've got plenty to go on with the repairs I just haven't done it yet and see now looking at it you think why have you not done this? why are you not waving this cardigan? Why is it still lying in a bag five years later? Right, let's put this one out of the way. I think what I'll do is I'll show you all the ones that are easy to finish first. So this one here, we'll go with this one next, okay? This is the this is the back stitch sweater by Bristol Ivy. I think it used to be called Sashiko, but then she renamed it. And I just love the shape of this. All I need to do with this is block it and sew in all the ends. Any wee ends that I've got anywhere. Just sew in these ends and it is done. So a wee block, sew in some ends and it's finished. And I think just going by my height and my shape, I'm a wee bit rounder in the middle. I think that's quite a flattering shape to be go oh, going over a pair of leggings or a pair of jeans. And it's still no done. I've actually got the wee lenser wool still sitting up the sleeves just to finish off. If I wanted more length, I had stitch markers coming all the way down as I was working on the sleeves. And that was the final one just to make sure that my sleeves were the same length. And it's kind of ridiculous that this is still lying, isn't it? Because it's beautiful. Even all the colours through that yarn. I'm looking at it now and I'm like, I want to wear this today. But, as I say, not much to finish that. So that would be, if I just focused on it, that could be done pretty quickly. And this yarn was um, Rowan Felty Tweed. And I can't remember whether it was the DK weight or the iron weight. Because I think it's a DK pattern. I'll need to check up on that. I'll let you know whether it's DK weight or iron weight. It looks like Aaron actually. It's quite it's quite chunky, isn't it? But that's another one that's quite a quick finish. And I think it would be a flattering make for me to wear as well. A flattering there's just a flattering shape to it for me. Right. Next up in the easy peasy stakes, let's go to this one. This is another one that's almost finished. And this one is called Trico. And this is a pattern by Louisa Harden. And this was a, a bulky weight Louisa Harden yarn. And as you can see, it's just a long, a long tunic shaped sweater. It's got split seams at the side. A nice long tunic shape. And I've already got an arm on. And here's the other arm here. Now this is, this is a Louisa Harden yarn, it's the Rosetti yarn, I'll show you a wee bit here, that's it here, and it is a bulky weight yarn. Now I really struggled with the sewn up of this garment, I really like the sewn up, especially when it's a jumper like this and it's worked in pieces, because you can block it all individually and then you can sew up. I'm going to show you, you can see from the inside. It's stocking stitch on the inside, so it's reverse stocking stitch on the outside. 
And I really like knitting this. It knitted up really quickly because it was on the big needles with um, a bulky weight yarn. But then it came to the sewn up and I just really, really struggled with the sewn up. And see when you actually see how little I need to do in this jumper. It's ridiculous that it's still sitting. All I need to do is sew that sleeve on. Finish sewing that sleeve in. Side seams are done. Shoulder seams are done. I've got two sleeves to put in. And it's... I've not finished this sleeve. But the reason that I struggled with it was I was trying to sew up with the same yarn. Can I find an end on here? Apparently not. There's one there. Now, see normally... Let's get that other little bit over. Normally when I'm sewing up with a novelty yarn like this, you can see it's got the kind of dusky mauve, the lilac -y, whatever you would call that. And it's also got a wee bit of tech, that, that bobbly bit to it. Well, normally what I would do is I would take that bit out and I wouldn't sew up with that bobbly bit. You can see that big, you can see that there. It's got a big lump on it. So I wouldn't sew with that strand. I would only sew with this bit here. But you take out that bobbly strand, you take out that nylon-y, I think it must be nylon, and look, it just pulls apart. So it's really, really difficult to sew with. And that is one of the reasons I've struggled, because it just comes apart. So you try to mattress stitch and give that a wee tug, and it just all comes apart. And as beautiful as it is to knit with, the finished article is lovely, but... I really struggled with the sewing and I've obviously just got to a certain point and put it away and thought, nah, I'll get it out later. And here we are, probably six years later. And I need to finish this too. That was just my wee tension swatch there. And this is just what the, the yarn that I've got left over from making it. But this is another thing that if you just sat down one afternoon, that could be finished. You can see I've got a favourite colour, can't you? When I'm sewing, when I'm kind of knitting in the pinks and the, the kind of purpley colours. So there we go, that's the Trico jumper. And that is a Louisa Harden pattern. And it's Louisa Harden yarn. It was the Rosetti yarn. And it was something that I had in my stash. Because I used to buy a lot of Louisa Harden yarns. And I do still love her patterns as well. Right, next up. This one here. Now again, this is something that is finished that I need to come back and sort. This jumper is called... Oh, it's a bee. This one has been worn. It's been worn numerous times. It has... rib sleeves. And it has a little bit of ribbon down, the, down at the seam. Almost like a wee fake side seam because it was all knitted in the round. And it's got the rib sleeves and it's got the zip up here to open and close it to get it on and off your head. And the only thing I need to do with this is shorten the sleeves. They need to come to about here. My husband's been wearing it. That's sorry, I did knit this for my husband. But see when he wears it, the sleeves are too long and he tends to turn them up. And he doesn't like all that bulk here when he turns up the sleeves. So I said I would shorten them for them. So that's all I need to do. I just need to shorten the sleeves a wee bit. But because they were knitted, they were actually cast on here and worked up the way. Um, I'll just need to catch the stitches and shorten these a wee bit. But you can see where it has been folded. And that's all I need to do to sort this for them. So it's been sitting in a bundle of stuff for me to sort. You can see both sleeves where they've been folded. But this is um, knitted with Cascade 220 and it's called Brigade. But it's a really nice jumper. Simple enough design, easy enough to follow. Really nice, just that wee bit of texture down there. It's just under your arms and both sides. But I need to get that sorted. Just shorten those sleeves and then that will be off my whip list. Technically it's not a whip, it's something I'm coming back to redo, but 
it's still in the bundle of stuff that needs finished or sorted. Oh, don't you fall off of there. Right, let's look at this one next. What's in this bag? You see in there? This is a Zweig sweater. But there we go. It's beautiful, isn't it? And all the detail up here in the, the yoke. It's really, really nice. Um, but as you can see, that's all I've got done. Just the neck and the yoke. And I think only had a few more rows to go. And then I was ready to split to go down into the body and the sleeves. But let's see what else is in here. This is the yarn that I'm using here. And I've got plenty more yet at the bottom. And it's the Rowan, Rowan Pure Wool 4 ply. Plenty more in here to work on to finish. And there's the pattern here. It's why the Caitlin Hunter. A lot of people knitted this. And I was kind of late to the party, as I always am. I'm always the last to find things out. But another thing that I really need to go on with. You can see I'm just down a bit here. I think I've just started that wee stripe here, which is where we split off for the sleeves. I've got another wee ball of pink in there as well, so I've probably got plenty of that too. Is there a wee bit at the bottom of the sleeves? No, I think that looks like it's all done. But there's just a wee texture pattern on the body, so that'll be quite nice to get on with. And again, sitting in a bag. Spent all that money on it and then it just sits in a bag. Let's put this all away. Right, I've got two more things to show you after this. Pop you in. And that last one. This here is a bag that I made myself. Um, log cabin. Log cabins with Liberty fabric, but it's a nice big size to get a jumper in, isn't it? And it's got the handle here, so once I fill it closed, I can lift it by the handle. Anyway, right. This in here. Golly, I love these bags. I used to have one of these when I was a wee girl. See when I saw that they'd released them again. Oh, love them. Right. This is Soft Spun DK. It's a Sardar pattern. Now, I was given this yarn. It was gifted to me, so another knitter was de-stashing and I have the back done. Oh, I'm such a fanco. Let me get sorted here. Right, there is the back. It's done. It's lovely. Now, the biggest problem I had with this pattern, I showed this in an episode at one point, but you can see it on this. Can you see that line? Where is it? There. There's a line running across here. The yarn just slightly changes in thickness. It's maybe hard to see when it's been folded up and crushed in a bag. Yeah, you can definitely see there's a line running through here. And that kind of put me off because I didn't like that line. So what I did was I started to rip it out and I tried to match up the balls because some balls were... I mean, it's a beautiful yarn. It's really, really nice. It's lovely to knit with, but it was just as you were knitting it and you were seeing those patchy bits. So that is one of the fronts. Can we see any changes? It's hard to see when it's been crushed up and thrown in a bag, isn't it? Nope, I think that looks not too bad. But it's lovely because it's got wee hints of pinks and purples and darker shades of grey through it. It's a really nice yarn. That is... This is pieces that I'm ripping out and doing two sleeves at the one time. I was doing both sleeves at the one time and trying to match up so the sleeves were the same. So if I got the back and the body, the back piece was very similar, the body piece was all very similar and the sleeves were all quite similar in texture and weight. I thought it wouldn't look so bad if it changed from the back to the front and the, or from the front to the, the sleeves. So I've still got a few more balls in here and I have marked them all up. 
where each one's to be used, like left front, and that's the second ball. That one's a thin ball. Oops, sorry. That's the left front, and this one's a thin ball. I did try to sort them all out and organise them, so I just need to finish this. And I've still got some pink in here as well that I haven't used. It was de-stashed from the same knitter. But she gave me all this yarn, and I thought it was just stunning. It was just such stunning colours. So I looked online and found this cardigan pattern. And I really, really like the shape of that pattern. It's the way it all drops down. Almost kind of like a... I don't know, like a ripply waterfall. It's, and it's asymmetric at the bottom. I just really liked it. And one day, it will be done. Right, let me just put this one away. And this here is the last jumper pattern that I have to show you. Just make sure I'm not showing you any of the pattern. Quickly flip it over. Right, have I got a picture of this one? Maybe not. I tend to just leave the pictures off and go back. Oh, there's a wee picture here. It's like a wee summer t-shirt. And it's by Along of Egg Anna. And this is how much I've got done. And the wool I am using for this is the Drops Cotton Merino. And as you can see, I've got all my colours that I need here. I've got plenty of the blue, the green, the yellow and the pink. And I've got plenty of the cream left, so it's just a case of getting on with it, isn't it? Why is it still lying in the bag? Who would know? I know I did do my make one. I did my make ones when you're increasing the pattern slightly differently from I normally do. I think I lifted up the the slope on the next stitch. So I need to remember how to, I just need to remind myself how I did it and make sure I do them all the same way. But that must be the back there and that's the front because there's the beginning of the round. But a wee bit more to go before I get to that stage there. But it's just a nice wee cotton merino. It's supposed to be a summer top. Maybe I should work in this one first and try and get it finished before the summer. Because the other ones are all more kind of autumn, winter themed, aren't they? So there we go. That is my jumper whips. So how many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven jumper whips. And quite a few of those are easy to finish. They're easily, easily, uh, finishing them is, is, will be easily accomplished. Especially the ones that just need blocked in the end sewn in. Right. I am just going to tidy this away. And I will look out the next lot of items that I'm going to show you. The next few whips that I'm going to show you are toys. And this one here looks a wee bit strange, but it's supposed to be a werewolf by Alan Dart. Um, I've got it all knitted. This is one of his wee feet here. I just have to sew in all these ends and sew up his foot. Another foot his body and got a couple of arms here this must be his head and I think this is the tail but what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop a wee picture in so you can see what he's supposed to look like finished and these are obviously other various wee bits and pieces of his his outfit I think there was a wee ruffle down the front but this is all knitted and all I have to do is sew it up and it's been lying for a wee while. You're seeing a theme here, aren't you? I like to start things, but I'm not so good at finishing. So I'm going to pop him all back in here. He's just been living in this wee bag. Didn't make this one. This was by Mrs Moog. But that was part of a sock kit that I bought a few years back. And these ones here are the other two toy whips that I've got. I have more crochet toys as whips than I have knitting toys. So... We'll look inside this one first. And this is a hedgehog. Oh, you can't see that. There we go, that's a hedgehog. And I just need to sew it up. Attach your head. Um, 
throw you up, we'll pop her up there. And I think I've got legs. Two legs. Two arms that just need sewn up and stuffed. And then I started a cardigan for her as well. But after I finished it, I realised that the cardigan was on the wrong size needles. And I think it might be a wee bit small for her. It's just knitted using the Katona. The Katona yarn. So after knitting that too small, I thought, I changed my mind anyway, and I thought part of the feature of the hedgehog is this lovely, the quills on the back. So I thought I would, rather than putting a cardigan on and covering all her pretty quills, so then I changed my mind and I knitted her a dress. But again, the dress hasn't been blocked, it's not finished. It's a little leafy edging along the bottom. And it's got wee buttons up the back. And this was from this book here. It's Louise Crowther, Knitted Animal Friends. There she is there actually. Holly the Hedgehog. So there's not much more to do with her and she's done. I'm terrible at focusing and finishing things, aren't I? But she's really pretty. There was also a wee shawl in this book. Somewhere in the book there was a wee shawl pattern and I thought I would do a wee shawl as well to keep her warm. But that's the book there. And all of this stuff is living in its own little box. Just waiting to be finished. Right. And the other one is another a similar little animal. So where are we? Still attached probably. So this is a body. And a leg. And there's another leg. Two legs that need sewn up and stuffed. See all these needles? I'm needing to look all these needles out because I can never find knit needles when I'm looking for them. And it's because they're all put away with whips. Same with my crochet hooks. So I need to sort all this out and get all my, my knitting needles back together. Just put all these in a bag. Because see this box? It takes up quite a... Both boxes take up a bit of storage room. So if you put everything away and just have it in a bag somewhere and take all your needles out and just leave a wee post-it note, it'll take up a lot less storage room. So, these pieces here are from this book here. It's another Louise Crowther one. Now, see when Louise released this book, I hadn't finished my hedgehog and I really, really wanted to make the panda because I love pandas. And I used to get called Amanda the Panda when I was young. But I absolutely loved that. And I bought, I told myself, if you buy this yarn to knit the panda and make her the coat, and make her a ballerina outfit, I won't just leave it lying. And as you can guess, I was full of rubbish. Let's see if I can find the panda. I love that wee cardigan on that monkey as well. That is beautiful, isn't it? I've got lots of wee leftovers, eh? Bo Peep, West Yorkshire Spinners, Bo Peep, I bet you I could do a wee cardigan. No, no, no I'm not going to start anything else, okay? There she is. My other panda. Make sure I'm not getting any lights on there. But that's her there. And I don't even think I've done her head yet. Oh no, I have done her head. There's her head. I have done her head. So I need to do her arms and her ears. Yep, yeah, arms and ears, and she's done. And I have got the yarn to make this as well the coat, the dress, the wee dress, and the wee coat. And I also bought, what was the other outfit? Ah, I think it's with the, that one there. I wanted to make her that outfit because I want, I want my panda to be dressed like a ballerina. So I bought the yarn as well to make that. And I promised myself it wouldn't get put in a box, it would be finished. You can see how that worked out. So this is a wee tutu. It's quite heavy actually. There's quite a bit of weight in that. There is three layers. You do the skirt in three layers and then you join it all together. 
before you do that final band. And I can't even remember how we finish it. Probably mattress stitch it up the back. But that's she's our tutus here as well. Look at it. Look at all those layers. It is like mesh and tulle, isn't it? So much there. This here. I managed to pick this bag up in the D-stash. And this is where all the yarn has been stored to finish the tutu. Finish a little cardigan to go with the tutu. And to do a little lace dress and a jacket. And it's all stored in this bag here. It's one of the panda bags that... Let me see if I can show you the tag. So Sweet Violet made. I didn't buy it direct from So Sweet Violet. Um, I bought it in a D-stash. Nora George had a D-stash and she was selling this bag and I couldn't resist it. I missed it first time round when So Sweet Violet was selling them. I wasn't quick enough but I managed to pick one up in a D-stash. It's got a lovely delicate wee pink polka dot and that is storing all the yarn for the panda. So there we go. I have two toy whips and two outfits. Well, not counting the jacket and the dress, okay? I've only started the ballerina one. And that is all my toy whips. So that was five things from there. So we're up to 12 now. Right, here we are. Moving on to my socks and mitten whips. I think we'll start with this one first. This one here is the Gingerbread Dreams sock. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful sock. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? This was by Candy Shop Yarns. I hope I've got that right. Um, and it's a lovely sock. I need to do sock too. The problem that I have with this one is I can't get this part here over my heel. It's really, really tight. I mean, it's it's blocked out. It's nice and flat. It's, it's lovely. There's nothing wrong, but it's just too tight. I think what I need to do, I knitted this in 2.25 double pointing needles. And I think what I need to do is come up a needle size for colour work. This was my first colour work sock and it did reduce the size of my leg. So I need to practice a wee bit. I mean, it's lovely. This is all... This is duplicate stitched on after you knit your heel. And I just love the wee, I just love that wee gingerbread man. The socks are beautiful. The reason I haven't finished them is because I have to got all my yarn in here. It was all from Lay Family Yarns. And I do need to get the second sock done. Um, but I need to experiment a wee bit. I need to experiment with either using a bigger needle size for double pointed needle, for, sorry, I need to use a bigger needle size for working my colour work, a bigger double pointed needle, or I need to try circulars. And I've also seen some tutorials recently that tell you to actually knit your sock inside out. So rather than it be sitting like this, you would have it inside out and you're working on it and that can help stretch it out a wee bit because it's just, there is no giving that at all. It's just, there is no, whereas if you go down here, you can see how much stretch you have down here. There is no give here at all. Beautiful sock, and I really need to finish them, but as I say, I, better, I need to experiment a wee bit first, and I just haven't got around to the experiment phase. But I actually, I actually test knitted this for Deborah. I did that at the end of 2021, and it's a lovely pattern. And I would recommend it, it's just my tension was off. There's nothing wrong with the pattern, nothing at all. So I'll pop that one out of the way. And then that leads me on to this one here, which is in a little gnome bag. I made this wee bag myself. I really like Kath Kidston fabric, and I especially like fabric that has toadstools and gnomes on it. So this was some of the Kath Kidston gnome fabric. It was actually a tea towel. And I find if you buy the tea towels, it's a quite a heavyweight fabric and it's just like upholstery fabric, so it gives you a nice sturdy bag. It gives you a bag that holds its shape quite well. This is Woolcraft Superwash Sock Yarn. I bought this from a wee shop in Darvo. It was a lady I met at a local knitting group. She opened up a craft shop and I bought that in her shop. 
and I thought I would experiment with the small circulars. So this is a nine inch circular and I'm actually practicing knitting a sock for my husband. Um, it was just to see what my tension was like on a circular compared to a double pointed needle. And I'm actually just on the gusset increases just now. So it's a toe up sock. It's my scoosh toe up sock pattern. I'll link that down below. And I'm actually on the gusset increases. So this was just a wee experiment, just so I could check my tension because I thought, see if it's too tight on the circular needles. Me and my daughter can wear it anyway. But that's how far I've got with that. I find these uncomfortable to use, just the way you, I'm knitting backwards, tinking. Um, just the way I knit, I sometimes feel I end up sticking my pinkies out as I'm knitting, which is sometimes quite uncomfortable. So that is... Sock whip number two. I'm going to pop that back in here. Oh, and that was the little, the little Chowgu nine inch circulars that I'm experimenting with. I bought the other one, it's Addy. Addy do the 10 inch circular. I've got one of those to try as well. See, I've started experimenting. I just have to go on and get them fit, get it finished, eh? Right, let's move this one out of the way. And let's move into yet another Kath Kidston bag. This time it's the toadstool fabric. And I like to have little matching DPN cozies, but that's the, the different fabric. It's the it's the red toadstool and it came in blue. I do like that, these fabrics. And this is again a sock for my husband. And it is using it's actually a regia yam. Regia, regia. And it's a six ply yam. And this is just a sock recipe that I've been using for a started to knit socks. Just toe up. It's got a traditional heel flapping gusset on it as well. It's very, very similar to my squish sock, but it's on six ply. And this one is knitted. I'm actually using three millimetres. This is the Knit Pro Carbons. I really like those. Um, I definitely I would in needles. Knitter, I prefer wooden needles, but these ones are really nice. The carbons are lovely to knit with. And this is one of the balls here. So I will get a pair of socks out of that. Probably get a third sock as well, because they're 150 gram balls of yarn. And I think I will. I think I'll get the three socks from it. There's another little case in there. I think that used to be my 275s that were in there. Right, let's put this one away. And this here is all the leftovers of regular sock yarn that I have. This is a sock that I started just in a different shade of blue. I've actually done a fish lips kiss heel. That's just a wee, it's not a proper stitch marker, it's a wee charm from Primark, Primark. We call it Primark here, I think it's Primark. But it's just a wee snowflake, but it's just like a stitch marker, isn't it? But it's a wee charm that you clip onto a bracelet. And I bought loads of those years ago at one point, and they come in great as wee stitch markers. So this one I've just popped onto two, yeah, two yarn holders, sorry, two stitch holders. Um, and it's sitting waiting, because I think I was out of yarn in that colour. Oh no, maybe I'll get some more there. That was probably left over for one ball, and that's a left over for a second ball. But my husband doesn't like odd socks. So I thought what I would do was... I would knit one sock, start one sock in this colour, do the other sock, and then I could maybe finish them in one of the other colours. I've even got this one here I can maybe finish them with. Because I can use two different balls, but as long as the socks match, you can't wear mismatched socks. And these are all just wee bits of leftovers in here. More wee leftovers. And what else have I got in here? Oh, how to start a toe. I used to do sock knitting classes. How to start a toe. How to do your tension swatches. But all these wee leftovers in here, I mean, maybe even get enough for another pair of socks because there's some more in here. Oh, there's a label in there. It was these yarns here. It was the Regia. And it was the college colours. And there was a website online that had these reduced to £3 a ball. And I think I must have bought about 10 balls. It was quite a good deal. So I bought lots and lots of them. There was pink, 
there was a purple one as well and I think I had this one here that's got shades of green in it and then there's, a, there's some purple and see what I've got left over in here so you can see there's some reds red and blue there's one there with a wee bit of orange I think that's part of the red one anyway that's all my wee leftovers and I've kept them in case I can knit like a scrappy pair of socks with them and this is all just other wee leftovers see as you pull out it was the West Yorkshire Spinners the Christmas yarns and as you wind off part of the ball because you want your both socks to match and you want it to start at the same place it was just in case they came in handy but I could probably get rid of some of those right so what's that we are, that's sock whip number four, this one. That's number four. Right. And let's go with these ones because these are nice and colourful. <clears throat> these are socks that I started knitting with my Henny Penny Makes yarn. These were, um, it's a blanket I'm knitting and I actually bought two bundles and it's her colour therapy club. She ran this in 2021 and in 2022. So with one bundle of yarn, I'm knitting a safe space blanket. I'll show you that in a future episode. And then with the, the second year, I'm crocheting up some hexagons. And you end up with lots of your leftovers because there's 10, 10 gram mini skeins in each bundle. So that's one of the turquoise ones and there's the other turquoise one so you end up with all these beautiful little leftovers after you've after you've after you've made what you intended to make so that that'll create a sock and then that'll create another sock and in here you can see that I've already started the green ones so these are cuffed down, double knitting sock. This is my Dodo sock pattern. I'll link that below as well. That's a free pattern that you can download. But this is, it's just a vanilla sock with um, knitted with DK weight yarn and it's cuffed down, this version. I do have a toe up version, it's currently in testing, but the cuffed down version is, is available just now. I'm in a fan cog in. And there's the other green socks. So they're, they're slightly different, but they're for me, I don't mind mismatched socks. So let me just put that back in there. Oh, maybe I should put those, hold on, put those back in so I don't lose a needle or lose my stitches. But that's the turquoise that I'm moving on to. And this is the first few pairs that I made. So there's pink. Now these have been sewn up and, sorry, these have all been knitted up and they've been blocked. This is the pink pair. But see the toe, the toe is from month two, it's the red, because I ran out of yarn and I had to move on to the red. And that's from the red as well. But that's my two pink socks. They're lovely, aren't they? Now all in, these have been blocked as well. All I have to do is sew in my ends. Sew in my ends and those are done. I can wear them. So they're still in my whip pile. But they are really pretty. And then I moved on to my, my red leftovers. And as you can see, I got down to here and ran out of red. So I had to start with the orange. So they're a wee bit of a blend. But again, these ones have been knitted and blocked. And I just have to go back in and weave in all my ends. And then this is the orange ones. These are slightly thinner and longer looking because they haven't been blocked yet. They've just been sat sat in a wee bundle but as you can see orange and then I've changed to the yellow round about here and worked my way down to the end just using up all those little bundles that I have left over and there we go that's the yellow into green and again these ones need blocked as well as the end sewn in and then you can see that's where I've ended with the green and started the other ones. So I'll have to finish these ones here. I'll finish them using the turquoise and then I'll start another pair with the turquoise. But that'll be, that's me six months into each colourway, into each club. And I've got, I'm have i going to have five pair of socks. So if I keep going and using all my left, as I'm using up the yarn from the Henny Penny Makes Club, 
and using up the leftovers I'm going to end up at the end of the year with 10 pair of socks and the plan is once I've got the 10 pair of socks knitted myself, my daughter and my daughter-in-law are all the same shoe size which is really convenient so I just thought I would let them pick their favourite colours they could maybe take three pairs each and then I'll be left with three pairs because I know my daughter-in-law she quite likes orange my, do my daughter likes blues and purples and I like pink so we can all have two or three pairs each well it'll be three or four pairs each actually I think if I've got ten and it's going between three of us so that is those socks they're just lovely aren't they they are so nice need to get these finished I keep saying things like that don't I need to get this finished I think I really need to focus on one thing at a time right and this is my last sock project this is a little basket that I bought in a charity shop um, I'm quite fond of buying little brown baskets in charity shops and then painting them so I went through a phase of doing this and this is obviously the pink one and I just painted it pink with some chalk paint and then made a wee liner for it so the inside looked pretty and this is the Zabava I think that's how you pronounce it the Zabava sock now this looks like a colour work sock it is colour work because it does have stripes but there's no colour work on the sole it's a really really clever construction what you do is you cast on the toe and then you work the sole only you only work in half the stitches and you knit the sole and then you do the heel turn and then you come back and you work the top of the sock and that's how you've got stripes on the, on the instep but you don't have stripes on the sole it's really really clever and she's this designer um, Rebecca Mauser there's her name here Patsy 55 Knits she's on Ravelry and she's a few different sock designs like this there's also a version that's it's one colour on the sole and the instep is a different colour rather than having the stripes but if you're quite interested in that kind of thing where it's something different it's worth trying and all this yarn here that's in this sock this is all yarn that I dyed myself and I've never known, really known what to do with this yarn so when I saw this sock pattern I thought try some of your, your yarn that you dyed it was just natural yarn that I bought it is just a platinum sock, oh, 75 25 and then I tried dyeing up some yarn so that's what all of this is in here all the wee, all the wee minis that I dyed myself different shades of pink and all the wee bits are in the bottom here the ones that I've used and I'll do my second sock with those and there we go that is the Zabava sock it's lovely isn't it it's different it's worth trying it it really is and these are the golly what are these called Knit Pro Royales the Knit Pro Royales they're a wooden needle but they've got the metal tip I like experimenting with different needles as I'm trying out my socks trying new things oh put you back in as well right and that is one two <coughs> three four five six six sock whips right we're going to move on to mittens now and this is a pair of mittens that I started making for my daughter this is a pattern that I would actually like to release soon I did knit these mittens last year this is Pixie Yarns you can see both of them are quite different aren't they just the way the yarn pulls but I love this pink and grey colourway so I knitted these last year and I've just got to write up the pattern and then I can get it tech edited and published tech edited, tested and published I should say and then these ones I made at Christmas do you know that in between Christmas and New Year when you're not really sure what to do so I started these for my daughter and this was leftovers from yarn I knitted a pair of socks for my husband and this was the leftovers from the yarn badger and it was a science fiction rainbow it's self-striping 
and I thought I wonder if I've got enough to knit some mittens so I checked the weight of the, these ones here I checked the weight of those and I thought I do have enough yarn so that's what I've got done all I need to do in these ones is the thumb and the wee leftovers are in there and I'll just attach that on to do the thumb now the only problem that I have with these I started picking up the stitches for this one the yarn is in there as well yeah and I didn't like it so I've put them away but the only thing is I've put them away on the needles and now I'm worried that my stitches are all stretched out or they're not too bad it'll be fine because I did leave them on the needles these are 2.25 they're like needles they're my favourite needles to be honest they're the ones that I go to if they've not got a project on them so there we go that's my mittens I need to get those finished they're really pretty aren't they and it's good because it's just it's just leftovers from sock knitting and I got a pair of mittens out yet. There was also a contrast colour that came with these with, with this sock yarn, but I didn't need I didn't need to use the contrast, the leftover for the contrast, so that can go away into a wee scrap box and I'll use it for something else. Oh, this little bag here. I love this wee bag. That kind of that comes out. Oh, let's tip the rubbish out. But this is a really cute wee bag. And this is um, Heather Ross fabric. I made this one myself. It's far, far away fabric. Oh, I just love it. Let's get a wee pocket in here. The wee pocket here. It's got a wee pocket at the other side. And I've got the owl and the pussy cat on this side and Rapunzel on there. And there's also the wee pin cushion that actually fits in one of your pockets I should use this more often but there we go that is my one mitten project and did I say six socks this is a hat that I made recently it is the brackish hat and I bought this when I was in Amsterdam now all I have to do in this is sew in the ends weave in all those ends on the inside and the reason I'm leaving this in my whip pile as well, that won't take me long to do that. But what I would like to do is use the yarn that is still in the box. And I would like to try and make some mittens. I've got plenty of yarn here and I could mix and match them and make some mittens with this pattern here. So I'm putting, although this is nearly done, I'm putting both of them in my whip pile because I want to get these mittens done because I want this knitted up and I want it I just want the box binned if you know what I mean, just get rid of it so I'm leaving the box out and that was the, the needles that I used I think it was the 3.5mm this was the Knit Pro Royale ones I've got a set of circulars of these and one of them broke that's why to finish my hat I had to put one of my Knit Pro the wooden ones on was quite annoyed at that snapped real easy and then she stands here going like that right this one here is the sweet shop owner wrap and I only cast this on a couple of weeks ago it is a pattern by oh I didn't bring it um it's the sweet shop owner wrap I'll link everything below anyway and I've only started doing I've only got three colours done I'm not going to make a full wrap, I'm probably only going to make enough so that I can join it to itself and make a kill. But this is all giddy yarns. It's all giddy yarns, yarn that I'm using and it's Knit Pro, Knit Pro needles. This is the three, three and a halves. I did talk about this in my most recent episode so I'm not going to go over it again because I did spend quite a bit of time already speaking about it. But it's a lovely pattern. It's really nice and the yarn's lovely to knit with as well. So that is another whip. And what else have I got? These here. This is ridiculous the amount of time these have been sitting waiting to be finished. And I keep looking them out and I keep doing so much to them and then stopping. This is the, the Marvellous Soap Mitt. Is that right? Let me just check. The Marvellous Soap Mitt by So Sweet Violet. And you can pull open, there's a little eye cord and you pop your soap inside. 
and you can use them in the, in the bath, in the shower. And I've got the pink one done. I don't actually use them as wash mitts. They actually just sit in drawers because they smell absolutely delicious. They, they're, they're really nice. So if you put them in a drawer that's got some, I don't know, your underwear in it, you want it to smell nice. You want your socks or your t-shirts. So I've got the pink one, got the purple one, got an orange one. These are finished, but in here we have the blue, we have the yellow, and we have the green. Now these have all been knitted, these three have been knitted, and all I need to do, see if I can get a wee bit more space here, all I need to do is sew in the ends and block them, and that's those three done. I have even knitted the eye cords. I've even got the eye cords done. A bit of sewn up and I can empty that bag. Another bag that I made myself. This one's a Emma Bridgewater fabric. It's quite nice in Valentine's Day, that one, actually. And this is all the yarn in here. So each 50 gram ball of Katona, because I bought 50 gram balls in each colour, and I was able to get my... Oh, that's two, that was two 25s actually, the green. And there's all the colours. That's what I've got left over from each colour. Oh, purple one's still in the bag. Purple one's still over there in the bag. With all the needles that I used. And with each 50 gram ball, I was able to make the marvellous soap mitt and a wondrous dishcloth. Now, all I need to do with these is block them. And I know that sounds silly because why would you block them? They're wash mitts, they're dishcloths. But see, just for the first time before I use them, I would like to get them blocked because they are slightly different in size. Some of them more so than others. I would just like to get them blocked and get a photograph of them all together. You can see that one's slightly different. And once they've been washed, once they've been blocked and been photographed, I'm going to start using them in the kitchen. And that's why they're sitting about, because I just need to get a picture of my little pastel rainbow dishcloths. Aren't they lovely? I did have these little um, blocking templates. So this one, I can actually pop that inside. And I know I want it blocked to that size so that the soap fits inside and it does stretch over it. And that's what I'll do. That's what these are for. And I think the wash mitts, I think that might have been... No, that must have been for one of those. Or is it two? Ah, it's double that size. That's what it is. Block them to double that size. And I'm going to show you this. Because this is something that I've just recently finished. And it, as you can see, it's blocking. This is a skush shawl. This is my own pattern. And this was knitted for a toy. It's for a little toy, one of the Luna Lapin toys, one of her friends. And I decided the toy needed a shawl. So this is a ball of 100% cashmere that I had in my stash and I didn't know what to do with it. There wasn't really enough to make mittens. There wasn't enough to do a hat or a pair of socks. I thought, do you know what? My little toy can have a cashmere shawl and it's lovely. Feels so luxurious. But all I have to do with that once it's finished blocking, is unpin it, sew in the ends, and it can go in my little toy. And now I've only got three more items to show you today, and they're three baby things. This is for a new baby granddaughter who's due later in spring. So, this is the first little thing that I've started for her, and it's going to be a little cardigan. So... This is the back piece and the two fronts and here are the sleeves and another wee sleeve over here. Now this has been sitting for some time because I'm going to change the pattern and I'm going to show you one that I made earlier. Okay, so this one here is one that I made for my son um, about 30 years ago. 
put over there. Right, this one I made about 30 years ago because my son will be 30 this year. I know you probably can't believe it looking at me. <laughs> sure. Anyway, this one here is for my son. Now, don't look too closely because the sewn up is not great. I've learned a lot in the past 30 years. But even look here, see the pattern? It doesn't line up at the front. But this was the first cardigan that I made for him and he wore it and so did my daughter as well. Um, the button band on this one, you knit it separately. Sorry. You knit it separately and then you sew onto the side of the cardigan. And as you can see, um, the stitch is a wee bit big and baggy in places. The buttonholes are a bit unevenly spaced. It could probably have been doing, we can, the top buttonhole could have been doing probably being up here. But... I did knit this one for my son, as I say, 30 years ago. It's quite old. The sewing techniques are not great. But, hey-ho. So this is one that I'm doing now for his, for his daughter. But what I'm going to do with this one, rather than a button band like this, I'm going to pick up the stitches around the edge and knit it out the way. I'm going to pick up the stitches all around the outside and I've even got stitches at the top of the sleeve to pick up. So that's the way I'm going to do that one. So it will be slightly different from this. Um, I actually knitted another one of these 10 years ago in blue. I'll pop a picture in for you to see. Um, and I knitted that one for my grandson Harley. That's my, my son's son when he was born. Just He's about 10 years old now. So there was a blue version of this 20 years later and now there's a pink one another 10 years later. And there's also going to be this little bonnet. Now the wee bonnet just needs stitched up, sewn down the back and I may have to make another one of these because my daughter-in-law thinks it might be too small for a newborn. She, she says her babies have big heads to which I responded, ouch. So you just stitch it up down the back and I'll put a wee bit of the, the sewn feather around it. But I don't mind knitting more of these. I used to knit these wee bonnets for my own daughter when she was young and I really did like them. So it's kind of carrying on a tradition. The cardigan that I knitted for Dad and the hats that I knitted for Auntie Chloe. So that's two of the things for the new baby granddaughter. Now, there, there's not much to do on these. These are pretty straightforward to finish. There's not much work involved in that, but they are, th th they are two whips and I'm going to add them onto the list for now. It'll make me feel better when I can score things off real quick, won't it? And the final whip. Do you know what? I'm going to take it out of here because it'll be easier to show you on its own. So this is a shawl for for the new baby. I did show it in a recent episode, just a regular crafting episode. And so this is the centre square and now I'm working on the first stage. So I have got, tell you, if I shove, shove it over that way you'll see the pattern a wee bit better. I should maybe split it onto two needles. So you can see it's old shale and you actually knit one side and then you, you it's an applied border so you do the wee zigzag edging along the edge. This isn't something that, um, that need, really needs to be on my whip list to be honest but it is something I'm working on but I am working on it for an hour every day. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can, th you see the pattern on it, it's really really nice. And again, I've knitted these before. I've knitted two of these before. Um, I enjoy knitting them. And once I apply the, the border onto this edge, get that zigzag border on, um, I'll then pick up stitches and do the other side. But it doesn't take long. I think the square in the middle, I've been timing myself. It took me 11 hours to do the square in the middle. And this has maybe been about six hours knitting. So I'm on track for getting this finished. If I just keep up with my, my hour a day, I'll get that done. But it, I'm showing you in my whip video because it is something that I'm working on, even though it's not been put away, it's not been put in a bag and tucked away in a cupboard. But it is lovely. I knitted one of these in blue for Harley as well. So he had the blue, he had the cardigan in blue, and he had the shawl in blue. So his little sister's going to have the pink versions of everything. Well, there you go. That is all my knitting whips. I was fairly confident at the start of this today that I had more crochet whips than knitting whips. And I think I've actually got slightly more knitting whips than I thought I had. 
but as you see quite a few of them are fairly close to being finished so if I focus concentrating those ones I should be able to get them off my list so I think I'm going to go right up a proper list now add all 27 knitting whips to my list and also share that with my, my crochet ones so what I've got a list of everything so far now I haven't shared my blanket whips with you I could do that in another video I've also got patchwork and quilting and sewing that I could share with you um, what else? oh design whips I haven't showed you any of my design whips either so they weren't included in my knitting my knitting whips so that's even more knitting projects I've got lying about but they're separate they're, they're, they're for designs so I'll show you those in another video as well my goodness I'm actually kind of getting a wee bit concerned by how high this number's going to be once I share all my whips um, let's make 2023 the year of the whip and see how many of these whips I can get ticked off that list try and bring that number down a wee bit I am now going to go and make a proper list of all my whips my knitting and my crochet add them all together and I'm going to try and make a nice little colour coded chart that it'll just maybe help me complete things won't it so I'll see you soon and thanks for watching bye